pulsating sphere here. And so to do that, we need uh, a couple of things. We need the actual cubes that we're going to use. So let's create a cube here. And let's go ahead and get the general uh, shape of this. And so I want it to be a flat, flatter type shape here. And so those are kind of the proportions we want to have. So if we take this down to 10 and maybe 100 here, um, that can be a starting point, although we'll probably need to dial that down a little bit. Let's go ahead and turn on the fillet to make it a little bit softer here. So get that, something like that for our cube. We'll go ahead and uh, now we need to create the uh, sphere that we're going to be using um, at to actually drive our clone. So again, we'll go ahead and drop in a new sphere. Let's bring it up into position. And this is not going to be something we're going to be looking at the sphere or seeing the sphere. We're just using it to drive uh, the clone. So I'm going to go ahead and make it just a little bit bigger than the central sphere. Okay. Actually, quite a bit bigger. And then uh, I want to change the type. Let's change that from standard to hex. And let's take the number of segments down to, I don't know, around 16 or so. And so this is going to be actually driving the clone. So the next thing we'll need is a cloner object. So we'll drop that in. Drop the cube into the cloner object. If I can get it in there. And then when the cloner object, under object, we'll change our mode from linear to object. This will give us the opportunity to input the object that we want to drive our clones, which in this case is the sphere. So we'll drop the sphere right in here. And now you can see all of those cubes are being placed on that sphere based on the vertex. We can change that to polygon center if we want. We'll go ahead and leave it on vertex. Now the cubes are a little bit too large. So let's go ahead and take those down a bit. Okay, so we're starting to get something a little, little bit better. Take that down to 2. Take that down to 25 by 25. And so we get something that looks a little bit more like that. All right, so let's start to drive this based on the sound. So we'll add a sound effector. We'll add our sound file. All right, and let's go ahead and turn off our the scrub sound. And right now the sound effector is driving the Y position. Let's actually drive the Z position here. All right. Let's bring this up a little so it's out a little bit further. So now you can see it's being pushed out. All right. Now we want it to only be affected by the same kind of frequency that this central sphere is, which is over here on this end. So we'll use filter, take that all the way down, and we'll increase the bandwidth to maybe 100, 150. So it's really pulsing there. Okay. We also want to have a bit of fall off. And we can cut off some of the lower there. Okay. We can also have it affect the rotation slightly. So if we go into parameter, we can turn on rotation. And let's just have it affect that rotation a little bit. So when it pulses, it rotates slightly. And you can play with the values here for the Z position change. Right. If you want to change the number of these, you can go back to our sphere and just increase the number of segments. That's going to increase the number of vertices on here and thus the number of clones that we have. All right. So I want to add a little bit of randomization to the position and also to the rotation. So we can start to combine our effectors here. Let's add a random effector. And this one I'm going to name random position. So we can create some different effects here. With the random position, I'm going to take maybe the position X and Y down to a very small amount. We can kind of randomize that a little bit. Um, and then for the Z, uh, I can change that to a larger amount. And we can turn off the sphere so that we can see that central core there. Okay. Now that randomization may be a little bit too much, so we can kind of take that down a bit. Okay. So that's randomizing the initial position. We can also randomize the kind of initial rotations if we want to a little bit. But again, that's not actually uh, modifying those. It's just, you can see where we're actually keeping the spacing there between them. So what we wanna do is now, let's randomize our uh, rotation. So we'll add another random effector. 
This time we'll call it random rotation. We'll turn off position and then we'll add some rotation in there. We want to make sure to drop that into our effector. A random rotation. And under the effector, let's change that to turbulence. And so we'll always have a little bit of movement in here. We can change the animation speed. Okay, so we get still get a little bit of turbulence there. Okay. And if you wanted to change, uh, experiment with the position, you could do that as well. You could create kind of a, a noise if you wanted them to pulse out kind of like that. You know, you could do that as well. All right, now I want it to look a little bit more like the central sphere is pushing these out, so I want to add a delay to these. So these are delayed or offset a little bit from this. So we can do that using a simple delay effector. Just make sure that that's dropped in here. And so now when we play this through, you should see a little bit of a delay. So this sphere enlarges and then these are pushed out. And so just feel free to kind of come in and play with some of the settings that we have. We have two random effectors, rotation and position. The rotation is actually uh, using a noise. And the sound effector, which is driving this, it's based on the lower frequency here. Okay, we've got a little bit of a fall off. We've also got a delay effector to offset it from the central sphere. We can turn on color also. We want to come in here and we grab a yellow or orange color. Make sure that we turn color on. Okay. And so then we'll just view this for a second and see what that looks like. So this is kind of pulsing that out. If it's not going far enough out, we can always kind of increase that value in here. All right. Um, another thing that we might want to do is actually animate this whole thing rotating slowly. So in this case, we could grab this outer ring group and have it go one direction. So we'll go into the coordinates and under the heading, uh, I'm going to just control click here and then all the way over here, let's go maybe minus 360. So it'll rotate very slowly. You kind of see it rotating there. So let's do the same thing here. For this one though, we're going to animate the sphere that the clones are being based from. So at zero, we'll just keyframe that. And then let's just do a positive 360 degree rotation. And now it should rotate counter to this. And if we watch it, we can see that as it comes in here, we'll see that rotate slightly. So just adding a little bit of rotation and motion in here as it pulses based on the music. Okay. Just watch this for a second. And if you want to have these affected a little bit more by the different frequencies, you can increase that range that we have in there. See right here, we're just using this very small range, uh, but you can increase that. You can see how that value comes out there now. So it just depends on the kind of look that you're going for. And you could also come in and draw out your spline shape to uh, to change the effect as well. All right. So now that we've got this going, the next thing we want to do, I think, is add some kind of accent comets flying around the central bowl here. And so this isn't going to necessarily be associated directly with our sound effector, but just kind of a, an added effect that we can add really quickly to our scene to kind of make it pop. So we'll do that. And and so we'll just have those kind of flying in a constant fashion. And to do that, we'll start by bringing in a circle. Let's change the plane to the XZ plane. So it looks something like this. Let's go ahead and bring in another circle. And this one will take our radius way down. Maybe to something like uh, 2 or 3 centimeters. Let's now bring in a sweep nerves. And let's drop our circles inside here. Okay. So we've got the large flat circle here on the bottom of the hierarchy and then the smaller circle at the top and that creates this ring of geometry here. So I want to create kind of a comet-like shape out of this. So we'll take our sweep nerves and we'll go into the object and on the end scale, I want to set that down to zero. So that will create 
the sort of uh, full scale here and then as it goes around it will scale itself down to zero. I also want to change the start and end growth so we can take our start growth up to three percent take our end growth down and, and just kind of create this kind of a tail here. Alright now under caps I'm going to go ahead and add a fillet cap on that end. Okay we can change the uh, number of steps here and if you want to change the radius you can. You can also come in and modify the first circle that we have here. I'm going to take that down to maybe one or two to create that shape. Maybe increase that. And so what we end up with is something like that. So kind of a comet shape with a long tail. If you want to decrease the length of the tail, you can go ahead and change our end growth and make it something like that. Let's now get a cloner object and drop our sweep nerves into the cloner object. All right, so we've got all of these uh, in here, and so I want to have them kind of coming around the side. So I'll set the top one up here, and I'm going to have maybe three. Three is probably a good number. And uh, let's go ahead and change the values here and the Y. We'll go ahead and bring those together a little bit. So it's actually going from the from the bottom there. So we'll change that, and also the scale. So let's change the scale to maybe 110. Okay, so they kind of follow along with that bowl. And we can move it up and down if we want to. And just so they're right along the outside of that. And change that scale. Now right now they're all uh, kind of right next to one another. So what I can do is go ahead and change the rotation. So I'll just add a little bit of rotation in here. So maybe 110 degrees or so. So they're all offset just a little bit. Okay, so we get that. Now, as we play through here, you can see nothing is really happening. Those aren't moving at all. So I want to actually add an effector to our cloner object. So let's add a time effector to our cloner. So you can see the time has now been added. And so in time, we can go ahead and say, uh, how, how do we want to actually rotate this around? So let's dial this down to a smaller number here. So as we play through this, it's actually rotating 90 degrees over one second. So what we want to do is just set this up to a higher number. Okay. So if we set this to maybe, and you can see that they're actually going in the other direction. So we want to go a negative amount. And well, let's just set that to something like negative 720. And that's over one second. So we scrub through this. These are actually playing in the right direction. Okay, and they're all offset a little bit. Okay. And if we want to give these um, a little bit of color, we can, if we want to add I want to add a, uh, a little bit of color to this. We can go ahead and add a new material. And let's just give it some luminance here. We can add that to our cloner. And then we get these sort of comets flowing around here. Okay, and you can raise these up a little bit if you want to. You want to have those coming up up here a little bit more. All right, so that's just a quick way to add some uh, interesting accent effect here as our music plays and as we drive all the rest of these objects. So the next thing that we want to, to look at is maybe adding some particles inside here, some what we call particles, but basically just some very small objects that we're going to be using, and they're going to also be driven by the uh, the sound as well. So just using our cloners in a different way to create some very small objects in here. And uh, we'll look at how we can do that in the next lesson. That uh, we want to kind of move around randomly. So let's go ahead and I'm going to turn off the central orb group, which is those outer cubes. And we can actually use the central sphere group as a basis for uh, what we're going to be creating. So I'm going to go ahead and control drag this up to duplicate that. And I'll just call this something like uh, particles group. And these aren't going to be actual particles, but uh, we're just creating some very small objects to use for this. So go ahead and call this particles group. 
And so right now we have this added to a cloner, uh, this sphere, but we don't necessarily need to use a cloner object. We can use anything that requires or that allows you to input a, an effector. So let's say we want to use maybe a fracture. You can drop this sphere inside there and the fracture actually will enable you to add an effector. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to increase the radius on my sphere, make it a bit bigger. Okay, and so this is going to be the basis for where we want our uh, particles to be. So to create our individual particle, we'll go ahead and create, uh, we could either create a sphere or a platonic, just do a sphere. We can make this very small, so maybe two centimeters or so. And because it's going to be so small, we don't need all of these divisions and these segments. So we can take this way down to maybe something like eight or six. So we get something like that. Let's create a uh, cloner object and we'll drop our sphere in there. We can just call this something like particle. And the cloner object, we can drop in an object. So we need to change the mode from linear to object. We'll drop in our fracture object as our object. So now we can see all of these little particles appearing on the vertices of this sphere. Okay, so the sphere itself is actually in here. We need to drop our uh, sound effector in here. So this is the sphere sound effector that we've got. Okay. And so now we can see that this is really affecting that a little bit too much, right? So let's go ahead and just take this and dial this down. Okay. So now it looks something like that. We can go ahead and take the color off of this. And we'll just turn our color off. Don't really need to modify that. All right. And the sphere itself, we don't really need to see either. So we just need to see that cloud. So right now you can see that that cloud of points is moving based on that sphere. Okay. Now what we want to do is actually have these points inside the sphere. So we'll go to our cloner object and under mode, let's choose volume. So it'll put those points inside the volume. Let's take the sphere itself and that's actually the other sphere. Let's take the particle and let's make it maybe a little bit smaller. And then let's increase the number of clones. So right now we have 50. Let's up that to maybe 300 or so. And up it a little bit more. So now what we've got is a basically a cloud of points here. It's being driven by the shape of the sphere that we've got. So if we turn this on, you can see how big that gets. So if we go into the sound effector, we can maybe increase that a little bit so that those fill up that uh, area a little bit more. We can add this material to our cloner. Okay. So we get this nice glowing particles. Okay. Let's add some random movement and motion to this. So I'm going to drop everything underneath our particles group that we have here. And let's add a random effector. So we'll add our random effector here and we want to drop that onto our fracture actually onto our cloner, I'm sorry because we want to actually affect the uh, particles themselves not the sphere. So we'll drop the random onto there and then in the random effector let's go into the parameters. We can change the position. Uh, I don't necessarily want to change the scale and we can also modify uh, the rotation, although these are spheres, so it's not really going to do much. So mainly what we want to focus on is here in the position. Okay, so we can go ahead and increase that amount. And I want to make sure that most of them don't fly out here, but I want to actually move those. So I'm going to add some noise to those. And now let's take a look at what that looks like. We can look at some of the areas where it's relatively where there's relatively uh, no large movements going on and see how those are flying around inside there. Okay. So the particles are cloned based on the fracture object, which is using this sphere. Okay. 
They are being cloned within the volume of the sphere. The sphere's size is being driven by the sound effector. Okay, and then, so that's increasing and decreasing. The particles themselves are now being driven by the uh, random effector. If you want the particles themselves also to be affected by a sound effector, all you have to do is add an additional sound effector. Again, we'll drop in our sound. And then this sound effector can be piped into the cloner. So drop that in. And this sound effector is currently affecting the uh, position. So we can have it do that if we want to. If you want it to affect the scale, you can do that. Okay. So now the not only is the random effector affecting the position, but also the sound effector is as well. And if we look at the effector, you can see see um, that we have the ability to come in here and I just want to use again just these sort of higher frequencies in here and not so much the lower frequency so you can come in here and do that okay so you can see as these have come out and they don't really do too much they're kind of rotating a little bit but these are just kind of popping around inside there which is kind of the look that we're going for okay Sometimes they, they will uh, kind of pop out a little bit. You can uh, kind of delay those if you want to. And just play with the settings generally to get the look that you want. Alright. So that's just adding those little particle kind of uh, pieces inside there. The next thing that we want to do is to maybe add a little bit of camera animation to this. Okay. And then once we do that, we can kind of create an interesting end to the song by adding some keyframes here. And so we have the opportunity to come in and tweak any of the uh, pieces of this that we want to. But let's add the uh, additional element of some camera animation to this. So uh, in order to do that, we'll create a new camera. So we go and jump over here and let's create a sort of a light. Let's jump in here and create a new camera. And so right now we've got our camera. We'll just go through and look through the scene camera and kind of move this around. Okay, if we go back to our editor. You can see it's back where we initially created the camera. So now we've got a couple of ways that we can look through things. So we'll go to our camera and we want to start keyframing the position of this camera. So let's figure out where we want to start with, uh, where we want to start from. So let's say we want to start with a little bit more of an overhead shot. And let's go back down to the uh, beginning here. And so let's say we want to start right about here. So under the coordinates tab for the camera, I'm going to go ahead and just key by holding down control and clicking on the position XYZ and also the rotation HPB. And so we'll go ahead and key those. Now as we come to maybe around frame 500-ish, we'll go ahead and move in. Okay. And also start to rotate around a little bit. So kind of rotate around here. Let's go ahead and key all these values again. And we can go back and see what that looks like. So if we start up here, our camera kind of starts to rotate and move in. And I'd like it to move in a little bit more than what it's doing right now. I'd like it to move in a little bit quicker. So let's go to frame about 140 or so. And we'll just push in a little bit. And we'll just now keyframe those changed values here. Go back in, see what that looks like. Okay, so it's moving in. Now we're kind of rotating around as we get up to this next keyframe that we've got there. Okay. Now from frame, uh, whatever frame this is, about five, six, five fifteen or so. Let's go ahead and about frame. 1000 let's have our camera move back and over once again and this time I want to bring it kind of bring it down under the the sort of bars here so we get a little bit of the bars coming through here okay so we can kind of move in there and so we start to get something like this. So let's go ahead and key that. 
we'll key all those values. We can check and see what that looks like. Now halfway, we can kind of modify this a little bit. So we compose our shot a little bit better. And let's go ahead and add another key. Okay, we want to keep rotating around. So we'll kind of just continue to rotate. And key those values again. Okay. Check and see what that looks like. So we get kind of on the back side here. All right. Now from here, we want to move back up to the top. So I'm going to move back up here, kind of rotate around a little bit more. But I want to come more uh, to the top, back up to kind of where we left off. So I'll go ahead and key those values once again. Okay, so if we take a look at this now, let's see what this looks like here. So we start from kind of a, a view up the top and then it kind of moves in close to some of the cubes and rotates around as the uh, cubes themselves sort of rotate as well. So we get here to frame about 515. And you could, if you wanted to, you could create some more interesting camera cuts and things like that. But we're just kind of moving the camera around a little bit. So the camera moves around and down, comes down behind the bars, and keeps rotating around. Okay, and then as the animation comes to an end, it's going to start to come back up to the, uh, the top here. Okay, there's the end of our song. So as the song ends, I want to go ahead and create a little bit more of a transition. And so that means keyframing some attributes here. And um, right around here, I also want to kind of center this up a little bit. So I'm going to go to frame, we're on frame 969. I'm just going to move this down a little and key everything just so it's framed nicely. Do the same thing over here. be about 11.59. Kind of center that up a little bit more and key those. Okay, so watch through this once again. And so I want to transition some of these uh, pieces a little bit better when this uh, song ends right about here. So if we listen to this, So everything I want everything to sort of turn off at that point. So for the uh, the central orb group, I'm actually going to scale that down. I'm going to go out to my editor camera to be able to do this. And right now, the axis of our group is down here, and I want it to actually be at the center of our cloner, actually the center of the sphere. So I'll go ahead and select the sphere, and let's go to structure axis center, and we'll center the parent to, and so that'll center this null based on that sphere. So listen to the music. So starting at about frame 1440, I want to key the scale and then maybe about frame 1490 or so, 92 maybe. Uh, let's go ahead and change this scale to zero and key that. So that will keyframe those into nothing. Let's do the same thing here on the central sphere group. So right now we have the sphere. Let's go ahead and we can either just take that sphere down or we can center parent to. Okay. And again, I want that to probably shrink before the outer, the orb there. So we'll go ahead and keyframe that. And then here, just a few frames later, go ahead and key that at zero. All right, and then for the particles, we can kind of do the same thing here for the particles group. Okay, we have the sphere at the center. So again, I'm going to center the axis, center the uh, parent to rather, and then right about here, we'll key the scale. 
and then reduce that scale and key that. All right. Okay, so we need to also get rid of this random effect, the color effect on these bars out here. So if we go in into our outer ring, and we've got the random effector. We've got the strength value for this. So here, we can start about here and key the strength. And right here, we have that strength be zero. So we can have that strength go to nothing. All right, we can also key the color of this. So if we go to the cloner and go to transform, we've got the color and we actually have this little dot, so it means we can key it. So let's leave it blue until maybe right about here. And then we'll key that and take that down to maybe a gr kind of a gray and key that. Okay, so it's gonna take it down to that sort of gray look. Okay, the, autom the color will automatically drain from uh, these rings. Now we just need to deal with the uh, sort of little comet pieces. Okay, so if we take a look in the comets group, okay, and go into our sweep nerves, okay, we can see that we have, go ahead and click on that, we've got in, under object, we've got a start growth and end growth, okay, where we can change those values. So here, we can actually animate the end growth, okay? So starting from right about here, we can have that uh, end growth keyed. And then here, let's go ahead and change that value all the way up to about three. Okay, and then right after that key, which is on frame, going to be on frame 14, it's like 1482. So there we'll also key on the, we could key the cloner. Okay, visible in editor. We could change that to on and on. So the visibility here, we can key both of those. And then the next frame, let's just go up one frame here. The next frame will change that to off and key both of those. Just want to make sure I got that keyed. So that'll when those tails actually come in, that actually turn the visibility off right after that. So let's take a look at what that looks like here, just that end portion. And let's take a look from our camera. And so we'll see what that looks like here. Just play let this play through. Alright, so I think that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and take a look at the finished piece here. And so we'll just start at the beginning using our scene camera. And I'm just going to let this play through and maybe interject a little bit, but uh, pretty much just let it, let it play through here as we watch this. So we've added the... Uh, added the animation using the sound effector on the bars on the outside and also the cubes that are kind of dancing in the middle. They're being sort of driven out by that central sphere which is kind of using that low frequency uh, area there that's just kind of beating. We've uh, gone ahead and added some random movement with those little particles inside there. We've added the comets racing around on the inside. The sort of speaker cone at the bottom. Now we can really see how we've deformed those bars that are shooting up, which is nice that they're following along with that curve. So here we're coming to the end. And so we've keyed some of these values here. Just to kind of create the effect of this turning off. Now it starts up again. So uh, you can key some of these other values too if you wanted to key that central ring and make it turn off a little bit sooner. You could do that. But uh, just as a kind of summary here. We go back to our editor and uh, so we've built these out with our deformers. You can see here how this is created. You'll, you'll be able to find all this with your project files for this particular project if you want to go to each individual file and see how that's set up or you can follow along from beginning to end 
you know, if you if you did that, if you need to go back and look at project files, you can certainly do that as well. But here's the setup that we have for the outer ring. We've got the cone in there with, at the bottom with the sort of uh, uh, little rings that are bouncing up and down. And all of these are using our sound effector to pipe in that music that we've got, uh, generously provided by Daniel Rockwell. So again, want to thank him for that. And you feel free to use it in your own project as well. And so all of that music is driving the motion of these. So we're not really setting too many keyframes, but we're getting a lot of movement and a lot of motion with not a lot of keyframes. Just using that music, it's all kind of synced up. We're able to choose which parts of the uh, frequency graph that we want to use for the individual objects. Um, and we looked at how we can combine the sound effector with other effectors, random effectors and things like that to get some really neat results. So you know, this is just one of an infinite number of you know, permutations of putting things together and using sound to drive those. So maybe use this as a jumping off point and create your own custom project either based on your own music or the music that we've provided. And it's really just limited by your imagination as far as what you can do with the sound effector here in Cinema 4D. So hope you enjoyed the last hour or so. Really appreciate you listening, and we'll see you next time.